Hello my lovelies! Today we're going to be talking about kind of my most requested topic of all time! How to have a great dance partnership. I don't just have one dance partner. I am super lucky and right now I get to work with two amazing individuals. Let's say hello to Oreski and Mike. Hi, my name is Oreski and I'm not wearing any pants. Hello, I'm Mike Sonder coming to you from Boston virtually over the interwebs. I'm, I'm joking. I am wearing pants. It's sweatpants, but it's pants. But my hair, just like you maybe, is greasy and that's why I'm wearing a hat. I travel around the world teaching blues, lindy hop, solo jazz, balboa, teacher training, lots of different things. I'm half French, half German. I live in Berlin right now in Germany and uh, I used to live in Heidelberg, um, also in Germany, just at the other end. In this video, we're going to be talking about some of the things that we think make for an amazing dance partnership and how to be an amazing dance partner yourself. Heads up, most of the stuff can boil down to effective communication and applies not just to dance relationships, but kind of all relationships. A lot of people think that they need a dance partner to be kind of really working on dance and I want to tell you that you you don't need that. Your relationship to dance should be your own first and foremost. If your dynamic with your partner isn't going super well then that can make your whole relationship to dance feel like it's not going super well. So my suggestion is have your own strong relationship to dance yourself and then add any partner or partners you're working with as a layer on top of that. It's part of your relationship to dance, but not your whole, not your whole thing. When you want to create a dance partnership or find a new partner, start small and start with a specific project. Would you like to do this one competition together? And then that allows you to see if it's a dance project, are your dancing values aligned? Or if it's a teaching project, are your teaching values aligned? And that can be really important, especially at the beginning. You don't want to lose any time on finding that out. So this one is super important to me, and I honestly think it ranks in my priority list as higher than dance chemistry. I think core values and matching core values for me ranks at the tippy tippy top of the list. Like if you do not agree on how to dance or your thoughts on the dance and your priorities as dancers, like girl, that ain't gonna work. Mm -mm. Nope. For me, that is the number one thing to think about. So a great thing to do if you've started working with someone recently is sit down with your favorite beverages and talk about what you want to get out of the partnership. Why are you looking for a partner? Um, see what areas of overlap you have with this other person. You can communicate explicitly about your expectations. That way, later on down the road, you don't have a moment where you go, but I thought you were going to do this. Why did you think that? You never said that. Instead, communicate early and often about what you are looking for in the partnership. You can then find your areas of overlap and see that, ah, maybe in this partnership we work on these things and these things together, and then on these other things we don't really have any overlap, so we can maybe work on those individually or with other people. How to deal with long-distance collaborations? By first setting very concrete goals and concrete timelines. For instance, for competitions, we're gonna have two or three training weekends before the competition, at least. Or if we're gonna teach together, we're gonna to have also, at least one weekend, if not more, of class prep so that you can really have that time where you both really committed. Because you cannot see each other on a regular basis, you have to make sure that you see in moments where you can be fully present. Also establish, okay, so those are the things to do until then. These are the things we can do alone. These are the things that we have to do together. On that first weekend, we're going to choreograph the thing, if you're working on a choreography, for instance. Between the weekends, I'm going to work on my performing phase, or I'm going to work on the details, on remembering exactly what the arms do, or the feet, or that exact rhythm, just practice that to make sure that I make it, I do it right, etc. And then the next weekend, we can expand, refine the choreography, that kind of stuff. And so you can work on those things and, and make sure that um, you have a good flow, even though you're far away from each other. In every successful dance partnership I can think of, each individual person has their own relationship to dance, works on their dancing on their own, as well as with their partner. So then each person is bringing something to the table, is bringing their own ideas and their own energy to the partnership, rather than relying on the partnership to give them that. You should feel totally comfortable giving and receiving feedback with your partner, and you should have an open line of communication about how you like to get feedback and also what type of feedback you are looking for at the moment. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, watch the video I made on feedback. I've seen a number of people over the years believe that their dance partnership 
also needs to be a romantic relationship. That works great for some people, uh, but it works terribly for others. So the important thing is to figure out what works for you. I think everyone agrees the diplomatic answer is if it works for you, it works for you. But my personal advice and the advice I have received is just don't do it. It's not necessary. Uh, the only thing I would recommend, of course, is to not throw yourself too quickly into a dance partnership if you're a romantic relationship or the other way around to just give yourself the time to find out if that works or if it doesn't work. If you're in a dance partnership with someone who's not your romantic partner, chances are people are going to believe that they are no matter how many times you tell them they aren't. <laughs> in general, that's a tip actually I want to give for any dance partnership is to really stick to, the, to your values and really be honest uh, also when it's difficult. So for instance, in class you said something like this and I don't, I'm not sure I agree, can we talk about what you meant? And then sometimes you can see that it's just a way of saying things but actually the value behind it is the same. Or sometimes you realize, actually, we don't agree on that value. Is that a problem? Is that not a problem? Sort it out. Like, how can we go about this in the next class? Yeah, stick to your values, advocate for what you want. So if you're creating choreography and you think that the choreography is going too much in one direction, not saying anything, that's going to build frustration in you that you're not going to express. And then that's going to just bring down a little bit the mood. And it's really important to bring both people's strengths into, into what you're doing. Uh, to really have something that is unique to that partnership. So this one I think is super important. It hits a little bit close to home for me. You and your partner should be equal. You and your partner should have equal contributions to the discussion on what competitions you do, how you perform, where you teach, how you teach, what you teach. If you feel like you are not being treated equally, and if you feel like you're not being heard or seen, I think this is a moment you need to have a conversation with your partner. Ideally, early and often. If you're not being paid the same as your partner, if you're being seen as less than by your partner, if your partner sees you as less than, this is a serious problem that you need to discuss. And I think it's particularly prevalent for people who do not fall into our cis, white, heteronormative patriarchy. So if that is you, make sure you're valued because you are valuable. Your, your ideas and what you bring to the table because of who you are as an individual is valuable. So make sure the people around you also see that and make sure your partner sees that. Because if they don't, I would argue you, you need to have a conversation and it's not a fun conversation to have. So once again, communicating about your expectations, both big and small, is a great thing to do early and often in your partnership to keep things running smoothly. Uh, if you can, having periodic partnership check-ins is a great thing to do. Don't limit yourself or try to fit into other preconceived ideas of what partnerships should look like. Figure out what works for you as an individual and another person as an individual. Figure out what that overlap is. I wish you the best and someday see you out on a dance floor again, I hope. Those were my two cents. I hope it helped. I'm looking forward to see a little bit what you have to think in the comments. I will now free my hair and go to bed. Out. Another thing that I think is super important as a dance partnership is to celebrate your dance partner and celebrate the things that make them amazing. And I want to make sure that they know how lucky I think I am I get to work with them. There are very few people in this world I feel as comfortable with as I feel with Ereski. He is so kind, so non-judgmental, and so open as a person, and I think he's a fantastic instructor because of that. Because he really empathizes with his students, and he understands what they're going through, and he takes that time to get to know people as people. And that is such a wonderful quality. And we have the forking best dance chemistry. We just hear the music the same way and come up with the same dumbass variations and it makes me so happy. Let's talk about how amazing Mike is now. One, he's a phenomenal teacher. I have both been in his classes and also seen him teach and I love the way he breaks things down and he's got such a great vibe in the classroom and it makes people feel super chill and at ease and like ready to learn. He's also super duper hard working and I really value that because I love working hard and I am such a little eager beaver and the fact that he makes me feel like I need to train more and that I want to get into the studio for longer and do more and work harder is so incredibly motivating. I am so incredibly lucky that I get to work with people who are amazing dancers, incredible instructors, and just freaking excellent human people. And I found them by not limiting myself to what was directly around me. None of my dance partnerships that I work with today are local. I work with people who I like, and for me, time and space have no limits because I'm looking for people who I connect with, people who I find enjoyable to hang out with, and then I will build a fantastic dance partnership on top of that, regardless of what time zone they may or may not be in. 
Boston. <laughs> Alright guys, this has been a super long video and I'm so grateful that you stuck around for a good chunk of it. Thank you for my patrons for supporting me. Check out some of my other videos here and here. If you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing, pop me a like, and all of that other YouTube crap. Am I doing it right? Is this what you want from me? Am I a YouTuber now?